yum 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 Welcome to the Pepper Mill on Water Street in downtown St. John's, easily recognized by its multicolored pepper mill painted right on the window and inside you'll find an equally colorful restaurant with its Provençal colors, paintings by Jean-Claude Roy of English Harbor West where owner Debbie Petit hails from, beautiful blue tablecloths, handsome flatware and seating for about 40 patrons. Hello, I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Steve, this is a brilliant little restaurant. Nice place for an intimate dinner for two. I can't wait to get uh, into my food. Speaking of brilliant, we've got, a, we've got a brilliant guest on our program today. We certainly do. We've got Aidan Flynn from the Rabbit Town Theatre. Filmmaker, film star. Yes, he's been in movies. And of course, famous for his one-man plays. He's mm -hmm. just a dazzling young actor and a bit of a foodie as well because uh, he was experimenting with a classic dish a while ago. And he's one of my favorites as well. He wanted to, me to make, with a little bit of a twist, a beef wellington. Oh, mm. beef wellington. Love anything with pastry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, been eyeing that appetizer of yours, by the way. And now, getting a little bit serious, Steve, uh, you know, they say in an emergency situation, Newfoundland and Labrador only has enough food to keep us going for about three days. So you visited the Red Cross recently and found out what we as individuals can do to prepare ourselves. I did, I got some great tips from Anna Power at the Red Cross and again, that first 72 hours is very crucial, so. Okay, well, uh, we've got lots to talk about, lots to do and uh, I can't wait to dig into this mm -hmm. beautiful appetizer. I have grilled scallops with uh, cashew, ginger, Asian style sauce. It looks like a painting on a plate. And I've got a wonderful baked brie with some wild berries and a um, bed of greens. Mm, okay, yeah. well, let's dig in. Let's dig in and get this show going. Mm. I always tell people if you're embarrassed complaining in a restaurant, then you should go home and write a letter. Well, Carl, when I was in the kitchen, I used to enjoy getting a letter with constructive criticism. That's the key. That's the key. Well, here we are in the One Chef, One Critic kitchen, and our guest today is an actor of uh, stage, film, radio, bar mitzvahs, uh, you name it. <laughs> he's available. Uh, he's also the founder and artistic director of the Rabbit Town Theatre Company and a big supporter of the Rabbit Town community in general. Welcome, Aidan Flynn. Come Thank on you. In. You were actually born in Rabbit Town, weren't you? Were you grew up in Rabbit Town? Grew up Town? in Rabbit Town, yeah. yeah. I, the, the house that I grew up in is actually two doors up from the theater right now, so. Wow. My father is a very uh, important part of the custodial and the management and the uh, upkeep of the buildings. Yeah, what's your dad's name? Neil. Okay, yeah. Neil and Aiden. Yeah. Dynamic duo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, uh, you had uh, Beef Wellington, you were telling me a while back, and you fell in love with this dish, wow. so uh, we're going to have the expert Steve Watson cook it for you today. So maybe Thanks. you can pick That's up some great. tips on <laughs> yeah, yeah. how to do this. Perfect, Aiden, and welcome to the show. Thank you. What I have here, Aiden, is a beautiful beef tenderloin, as you can see, and uh, we're going to be searing that off in a little bit of olive oil and some butter. We'll season it nicely. And then what we will do then, we'll add some pate, and we've got a cell of mushrooms, which is finely chopped mushrooms with some uh, onions in there, and we'll reduce that down with a little bit of red wine. And we're going to be serving that with some Prisian potatoes and some asparagus tips. So This looks like an expensive uh, cut of beef. Beef, uh, Steve, how much would that uh, cost you at the supermarket? Beef Wellington is an intimidating dish, actually, <laughs> because that piece of beef there is about $47, $47 So you don't want to screw it up? No, you don't, you don't, yeah. but it's one of the simplest dishes to make as well, you see. So, uh, so let's get cooking, yeah, shall we? Definitely. So first of all, what we'll do, we'll just season it nicely, like here. The other thing is, of course, to get get it when it's on special. That's always a, that's always a good idea. Well, it's always a real crime when they trim it, you know, and you see them cut away about thirty dollars. You know, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, that's well, right. The, the idea is is to go to the the specialty meat department and ask him to trim it first, and then let him weigh it. So, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve, is there any reason why chefs take so much of the fat off beef? Um, because this is beef tenderloin, it's a very, very lean meat, and uh, you just want all the protein in itself. You don't want the, the meat, yeah. the fat would it, on there. Would so. it affect the pastry? Because you're going to wrap this in a pastry. It will do, and that, that's correct there, Carl, actually. With all the fat on there, it would yeah. seep through it and things like that. And we've got enough fat there in our cognac pate as well. So, so let's put a little bit of oil into the, into the pan. 
And we'll also put a little bit of butter in there as well. Any particular uh, kind of oil? Now, what I've used here again is a nice virgin olive oil. Not extra virgin for this one because we want to yeah. keep the, the lower uh, flash point on there. So, so Aidan, when you made your beef wellington, uh, did you use similar ingredients? We did, obviously, yeah. the well, beef, obviously the beef, yeah. And uh, the one thing that Steve said, though, that we didn't use was the, the pate. And I think right. that that's actually going to make the consistency it a lot is, better. It is, yes, right? yeah. yeah. Oh, so you didn't make a classic uh, beef wellington. <laughs> You didn't have the pate, the no. cognac pate? No, I did not. <laughs> Actually, I suppose the classic would have the, the actual duck liver, it, it, the, the foie gras. The foie gras yeah. around yeah. it, exactly. Yeah. We used the, uh, sometimes, the, well, we did the prosciutto wrap or the mm -hmm. uh, ham wrap around it as mm -hmm. well, too. So. Yeah. So Sounds good. That. And then we'll put that in there. And we're just going to sear the meat nicely. What I can get you to do, Aidan, yep. maybe I'll get you to season the other side of the meat because we've only done the one side. Sure. And I'll get you to, to turn it a couple of times as well. I can do that. This, this dish named, of course, after the Duke of Wellington, who clobbered Napoleon at the ba Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Probably you know what the Brits and the French are like, don't <laughs> you? Right. Know, that kind of thing, so. oh, tell me about it. Probably fed him an entire <laughs> one of these, maybe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he wasn't, much of a, he wasn't much of a foodie, the Duke of Wellington. They named the dish after him, but he, he didn't care that much about food. <laughs> well, well, he was like sort of myself, he was very much a workaholic, yeah, you yeah, see. It was just a, well, it was just a fuel for him, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it's good fuel. Oh, my gosh. It fueled us all the way through Christmas, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was a favorite dish, by the way, of uh, Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon. Oh, really? And, and also of uh, Winston Churchill. Well, I can see Winston Churchill yeah. being the favorite. His, his chef sure. made it for him during the Second World War, so. So should I keep turning this kind of uh, consistently? Just leave it for just a yeah, couple yeah. of minutes there. That'd be fine, Aidan. So as you can see, I've got the pate in the dish there, and uh, that's going to bind the mushrooms that we have here, the bottom mushrooms. And I cooked these, actually, about a couple of hours ago, and I put them in the fridge to cool down, because you don't want it too warm, because like Carl mentioned, if there's too much fat there, it's going to seep through right, the pastry. Yeah. The other thing is, browning meat is very important, because it what it's what gives the beef flavor. And you see all that, caram yeah, that caramelization on, on both sides eventually uh, will impart a tremendous amount of flavor to this beef. Absolutely. Is so, it, uh, and uh, sometimes you can roast this maybe too? or You could roast it while you prior to um, yeah. putting it in the puff pastry. Yeah. It all depends on the, the size of the, uh, the cut you've got. Here we've got the center cut. Right. Uh, if you had the head of the tenderloin, which is a lot larger, I would sear it for a start, then pop it in the oven for about 10 minutes right. to, to cook it to a little bit further. So we can turn it over now, right. and that would be perfect. Obviously, the cooking time, uh, you know, will determine the doneness of the beef as well. So if you want it rare, you know, you don't, you don't keep it in the oven quite as long. Exactly. It's nice when it's got a nice little yeah. pinkish. Oh, you, you want it yeah. medium rare, yeah. rare, yeah. rare, right, yeah. Uh, Aiden, I was going to ask you, you do some uh, improvisation uh, from time to time as well. I've been known to do it, yeah. Speaking of things that intimidate, that, <laughs> that would intimidate me, uh, being an improv actor. Well, you know, you don't have to learn any lines, so uh, that's... Well, I, uh, I know, but that, yeah, make them up. <laughs> and they have to be funny. Or well, you know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's not so much funny. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess what I like about it, I actually like doing it because uh, when I go into rehearsals for other shows, if yeah. I'm doing a lot of improv at the time, yeah. it'll keep things uh, nice and fresh in rehearsals yeah. as well. So. Now, do you, do you eat anything special before you perform? I mean, do you, do you, you know, like hockey players, they eat pasta yeah. or whatever, you know? Is there any, do you have well, any I kind of regimen that you follow? Well, I try not to eat before I uh, go on stage, yeah. you know, you don't want to be on stage and uh, have the uh, memory of the lingering meal <laughs> sort of right. conjure up in the middle of the second act, you know <laughs> what I mean? Right. Yeah. So we're almost there with that meat there, Aidan, and I've got this beautiful uh, piece of puff pastry, and what I did, I just went to the, uh, the local store, went to Coleman's, went to the bakery department, and just asked for a sheet, already rolled for myself, you know? And I brought that along, because pastry again can be intimidating. Yes, it can, And the yeah. nature of the dish <laughs> and things like that, and especially puff pastry. So, so. when you say already rolled, Steve, is, is, it, is it like that? that when, when I bought it, it was just like this. This was oh, one sheet. Oh, really? And they told it to me on a board. <laughs> they gave you the sheet. Oh, no, not the sheet pan, but the sheet. <laughs> very dinner, dinner, so yeah, cold. yeah, very, yes, yes. So we're just going to put that down the center of our puff pastry there. Beef and mushrooms are a great combination, I find. See that? I mean, it's, uh, you know, I can't understand why uh, Wellington uh, turned up his nose at beef and mushrooms. I, mean, I can't either. And foie gras. I can't foie either. gras, you know. He took it all from Napoleon, you see. So. <laughs> especially, you know, especially being, being from Britain. I mean, my God. Yeah. 
the British and beef, you know. That's our mainstay for sure. Yeah, exactly. So nice to spread yeah. that there. And do we need to keep any for the top, like to for the top when we lay it in? Or? Uh, not necessarily, because this is going to be the top. Because right, when we fold it over, yeah, and then it will all seat through. So, mm. so if you want to take that out, we can put yeah. that on there. Now. All right, here's going to be the. Uh, I don't want to, uh, you know. Don't be shy. Go all straight right. on there. Okay. Perfect. Do we need the pan kept up? Uh, yeah, just keep it up a little high there. Okay. And very. I'll uh, look after that for you, sir. Perfect. So I'm good, while I'm wrapping this for the um, for the potatoes, we're going to be making a pretty end potato. So um, what I have here is all these small little balls of potatoes. Oh wow! Look, um, they're cute. <laughs> that's the cutest. <laughs> that's the cutest ball of potatoes. How do they grow ever? potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> what I'll do, I'll just take the water off, and yep. then we will. Um, Cook them in the in the frying like pan, and know, I'm going to get you guys to make some. I'd like to yeah, know. Sure. How, yeah, I was just going to say, I'd like to know how you made those. Yeah. Okay, we'll just leave that over the side there, Carl. But we'll need they to put great. some look at that. oil in the pan yeah. there. Beautiful. They look like they're edible already. Yeah. They do. Yeah. I suppose you could eat them. I'm not much into raw potato. Raw potato. No. But, We're talking uh, about raw potatoes. We'll make them then. So yeah. what we have to do? We just got the potatoes here. Now I've got a couple of Parisienne scoops here, or melon ballers. Now you don't want to get a cheap one because the heads will fall off, so to speak. Like I bought yesterday, the Want to go to don't show potato. the brand name, don't you? No, 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 I won't show the brand name. <laughs> and, it, and it broke off there. And, yes, and, and folks, just, let me see. He, Steve did not get this at Coleman's, okay? <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> not Coleman's, so. so I'll get you, Carl, maybe, and uh, maybe first of all, we can pour the potatoes into the, okay. into the pan there. Ooh. That's perfect. Keep the, uh, the bowl there. And then oh. you can start to, uh, all to right. practice. Let, I just, let's just see how this goes. Um, I'll give one to you. The one for yourself, Amy. You can right. have the large melon ball scoop, and then there's the small one. Okay. Let's okay. see how Carl does here first. Though. Not very good, I don't think. But <laughs> anyway, it's kind of it's not. Kind a, of it's, like a half. It's like a half a ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're supposed yeah. to go all the way in there, get a full right. ball there, Carl. Yeah. You notice all the ones that I have there in the pan? I oh, see. Look, I did the same thing there. Don't be shy. Now, um, as you can see, Aiden, what I've done, I've just got an egg wash here now, right. and we just go around the. egg extremity of the, the puff pastry. Right. What I will do though, I'm just going to keep a, a little strip off here. What yeah. do you do when you run out of room? For, for you know, I've almost I've like made three balls and the potatoes almost used up. <laughs> well, what you could do then, you can the bake them mode. in the oven and you use the a melon baller and some cheese and you bake them in the oven with some cheese. Oh, okay. Yeah. You should never waste, waste food. No, absolutely yeah. not, Carl. And I you, you end up uh, with a potato that looks like the uh, mice have been added, or in this case, <laughs> something larger than a mouse. <laughs> there we go. So you see that, Aiden? It's nice and tight now. They yeah, and you gotta, I guess you have to get all the air out between them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then again, we'll just do quickly with some egg wash over the top, and we're just going to decorate it as well. So. Now that's the one thing that we didn't do with ours, is that we didn't have the, uh, the, decoration, the bravery to decorate. The decorative the, uh, touch. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't think it's that difficult, is it, Steve? No, all I'm doing, I'm just going to cut some strips. Let's take this. You have to, like, bring out your inner Martha Stewart. I do, indeed, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll see if it jumps out here right now. Yeah. It's certainly not happening with this, with this potato, <laughs> so. Like so. Don't forget the potatoes, Kyle. You can just stir, stir them, them around a little yeah. bit. And, uh... They'll, they, I guess the, the idea here is to get them golden brown, Steve? Absolutely. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll pop them in the oven for about 10 minutes, oh, 15 okay. minutes. They won't yeah. take long to cook once you fry yeah. them on the top and of folks, the... Folks, don't, don't put your pan with a plastic handle in the oven. Well, oh, that was a pretty good one there. Yeah. That was uh, almost round. Well, see, that's it. That, yeah. This the, one here? I, I, these ones closer to the oh, end Oh, yeah, these, so. are, these are pretty good, so actually. The you've, done, you've done a good job yeah, with yeah. those ones, yeah. Okay. You're obviously getting the hang of it. I am, yeah. Anyway, so, listen, while you practice... Uh, you know, making potato balls. <laughs> Steve does his decoration. I'm going to go to the wine cellar and get some wine, Sounds okay? Sounds good. And while that's happening, I will just bring one out that we've got already pre been prepared. Look. How's that? Oh, oh, look at that. Your favorite, eh? Oh, oh, let's just cut into it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think we should wait till Carl comes right. back. But, uh, <laughs> but there we go. That is lovely. And we kept that in the oven for about 45 minutes and then uh, just topped it with some uh, tin foil at the end. The leaves are beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. 1,003, 1,000, oh hey. What are you doing? Oh, I gotta work off this turkey and wine. Christmas oh. was brutal. <laughs> oh. Well, geez, you're, you're always lugging cases of wine around. I yeah, mean, yeah, I just figured, you know, I should do a little bit ah, more. you don't need to be at that stuff. 
Uh, listen, Jeremy, uh, we have Aiden flown upstairs and we did this beautiful, or Steve did this beautiful beef wellington. You've had okay. beef wellington. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. We've got a, like a $47 slab of beef. Wow. Cognac pate and mushroom pate. I oh, can't wait to, can't wait to taste it. Steve anyway, we need, we need a, a, a noble wine. We need a great wine to go with this beef wellington. Well, it just so dish. happens a lot of uh, Bordeaux came in this week. So oh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Bordeaux is one of those really tricky things for customers and consumers because it's really tough to find a wine that you like because the label is so confusing. Chateau this, Chateau that, and you don't really know what's inside. Mm -hmm. Mostly with Bordeaux, it's either Cabernet, Merlot for the most part, and then they have blending grapes in with it as well, Cabernet Franc, sometimes uh, Malbec as well, you know, from Argentina. Um, basically, with Bordeaux, price ranges as well is an issue, because sometimes they can go from $12 yeah, yeah, yeah. up to $1,000. Uh, this just, is also a wine that ages well, right? They do, but you have to kind of know what you're buying and what years were better than others to, to put something down to age. Yeah. If you're going to age a wine, though, Bordeaux is the way to go, mm. definitely. Uh, to, but to start off on like a basic level, looking at something like, like these wines here, they're Bordeaux superiors, basically mm -hmm. they're, they come from anywhere in Bordeaux, mostly Cab or Merlot mm -hmm. blends. A lot of times they'll say on the label now they've started to get into that. So this is Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon. Easy drinking, easy going wine, nothing, nothing too fussy. Uh, but you can go into something like a single vineyard wine, which is a sh single chateau from a single uh, region in Bordeaux, costs a little bit more. This is around $50. There's another good bargain to go for though if you're looking for Bordeaux. The second wines. Yeah. We have two wines here. What do you mean by second wines? Well, we have two producers. We have one producer, Chateau Talbot. This is their second wine. This wine costs $100. This wine costs $30. So why does this one cost $100 and this one $30? Because they put all their effort into the first wine. This is their major wine that they make. But they only make so much of it. There's only so much quality that they'll get out of one mm -hmm. wine. So what they have left over and some other extra barrels that they have, they'll make into a second wine. Great quality. It sometimes is way better than, than a basic Bordeaux, but it's half the price of, of the main wine. So you're getting you're getting a cheaper wine, still good, similar characteristics, but not quite on the level of the more not expensive. Not quite on the level of the more expensive, but okay. it's less than half the price. Look, I don't know if, how much is this? This one you're looking around eighty nine to Okay, I don't bucks. often drink wines that are eighty nine bucks, but because of this uh, beef Wellington and, and It's a good choice. It's a I'm good choice. Go. Mostly I, cab, a little bit of Merlot. This is gonna be Enjoy. Okay. Back to the workout. Maybe I'll just have some wine. Uh, Steve, everything looks beautiful. What's with the um, Joan Rivers? Yeah. It looks more like an altar to me, Aiden. I don't know. The you eight know, foot blow up downstairs. Yeah. Is really, yeah. 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 I got the perfect wine, oh, gentlemen. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. This no? is uh, Belle Gloss, which is a Pinot Noir from the Sonoma Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit pricey, but I thought, hey, Beef Wellington. Only the best. Right. Only the best. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Huh? Let's. Uh, so, Aiden, uh, you just finished the Balder one man show, That's the right, yeah. Norse Smith show. Mm -hmm. So, you're going to go from Norse Smith to Shakespeare, I understand. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, we're doing that out in Clarenville with a uh, company called New Curtain Theatre. It's a company we work with quite often. Mm -hmm. And the festival is called Shakespeare on the Slopes. So, the uh, theatre is actually right at the base of the uh, ski hill out there. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it, but it's an indoor theatre. It's an indoor <laughs> theatre. You can ski right to the door, though. <laughs> Yeah. Picturing you out there saying, you know, <laughs> yeah. we're well, all pushing cars, Romeo. maybe. We did that last year. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Steve, we have to talk about the presentation. Thank you very much, Carl. I've got these beautiful Prisian potatoes, as you can see, and our wonderfully sliced beef Wellington with our steamed asparagus. And, uh, and that's a very generous piece of It uh, is, it is. It is. Okay. It's only the best say. for the best, yeah. you see. Yeah. So. <laughs> Something I've always wondered about, you, yeah. you know, being an actor, sometimes you have to eat in a scene. Yes. Um, yeah. how, do you, how do you actually do that when you're on stage or, or on camera? Like, just kind well, of, I'd, like, give us a demonstration. I'd really like to show you if I could, because okay, I'd yeah. like to sort of cut into this. You know. Well, I guess, you know, first you, you, know, you, you have to draw attention away from it a little bit, so I'll, I'll speak to you first, <laughs> yeah. and then I'll, uh, as I'm delivering the lines, I'll yes. take care of all the business that has to be right. done. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the problem is that sometimes you might cut something a little too big, but then you just have yeah. to go with it. <laughs> And then you, it tastes good. Yeah. Then. Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm, and then the other mm. people, if they have lines, they go ahead and they say things. Um, mm. In the case of myself <laughs> and Steve, we're just kind of vamping mm. here until you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, I think what we should do is we should taste it. We down. should have a sample as well, Cal. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, we should. We'll taste it, and then we'll get Aiden's opinion on this uh, beef Wellington. 
Mm. 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 Beautiful and tender. So Aiden, what do you think? It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. I think you've done a, an outstanding job, Stephen. Well, it was That's teamwork. Absolutely teamwork. wonderful. Now, uh, you're going to send us uh, one of your recipes for the website. I am, yeah. Which is what? It's kind of a brown Betty, and it's a perfect meal to have after. It's very quick, mm -hmm. and uh, you can just whip it up in, in a matter of minutes. So, so it's perfect. A fruit dessert, right? Fruit dessert, yeah. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so, folks, if you want to get Aiden's recipe for brown Betty and Steve's recipe for beef Wellington mm. or bouffe en croute, as the French <laughs> say, uh, go to the Central Dairies website. That's centraldairies.com. Click on the One Chef One Critic page. And there you go, you've got it. Uh, thank you very much, Aiden, for thank being you. with us. It's been a slice, <laughs> slice of beef. Yes. A healthy slice, <laughs> a healthy <laughs> slice. Indeed it was. For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you and a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. When serving a meal, always warm your plates to help keep the food warm a little longer. I always do that, actually, because a cold plate will actually suck the heat out of your food. <laughs> and we don't want that. No. Well, Steve, uh, Aiden Flynn, typical journeyman actor, never <laughs> stops. He's a busy, busy guy. He doesn't, does he? Just look at these desserts. We've got a beautiful partridge berry crisp mm. here with French vanilla ice cream on top. What do you have? I've got a three chocolate cheesecake, the white, the dark, and the chocolate ganache on the top. Mm. Mm. Now, in an emergency situation, we probably wouldn't be eating like this. We'd probably uh, eat out of a tin. Well, we'd be eating out of a tin for sure. Mm. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Steve is going to take you on a little uh, visit now to the Red Cross, where we're going to find out exactly how to prepare ourselves for an emergency. You never know when you're going to have to leave the house in emergency. And we're here today at the Canadian Red Cross with Anna Power, and she's going to give us a few tips on just that. Thank you, Steve. It's really important for people to be personally prepared. We've just launched a partnership with Newfoundland Power in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador called Ready Kit Go. And the purpose of that is for people not to talk about what they're going to do in the future to get a kit, but to actually start doing it today. So what really goes important. into those kits? Really important that people think, well, for the first 72 hours, for the first three days, what might I need? Well, you're going to need water for each person. You're going to need food, canned food, non-perishable foods, and a can opener so people can uh, get into the food. Uh, medications, they've got a baby, baby formula, thing diapers, things that they would need for a baby. Also really important for people to think, well, you know, there may not be access to a banking machine, so maybe I should have some cash and some change on hand. Important documents, your social security number, passports. Have it all together in a kit, have it ready to go when you need to leave the house quickly. Should you be checking this on a regular basis? You should indeed. Really important that you have a radio, for example. Radio doesn't do you much good if there's no power, so you need to have batteries. Check the batteries and everything. Make sure that the batteries are not expired, that your water's not expired. Even canned goods can expire. So once a year, make it a point to check it. This is a great project for a family, Steve. I know in my own family, uh, I should really have that in the line of business that I'm in, and it was my 10-year-old daughter who said, like, Mom, shamed me into it. You know, you should really have one of these kits. And she was the one that started going around the house finding where should we store this? What should we put in it? Where Everybody needs to know where it is. Let's put some cash in it. So she's actually the driving force behind it. A great family project for people to be involved in. Mm, that was excellent. Uh, you know, we had some great tips there from Anna. Yeah, they were fantastic, weren't they, Carl? Yeah, excellent. Mm. Great information. Yep. Now, we want to thank everybody here at the Pepper Mill for allowing us to come in today. Debbie Petit, the owner, and uh, Curtis Chafe for preparing the wonderful food, and Jennifer, the server. And Coleman supply for supplying all the food for the cooking segment. Yeah, and so well, we've had a great time, mm. and that's it for this edition of... One Chef. One Critic. Look at that little squirrel on there. It's a squirrel yes. array. He's, he's so excited about eating this appetizer. And he completely forgot what it was, mm. but it looks good. So the do you John, have that ring? The John Rivers picture. Actually, that's not John Rivers. What? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah.